person. You might be thinking I'm going to bring something at you. That's so interesting. What's happening, Dad? With delicious taste and 50% more calcium. <laughs> Blue Diamond Almond Breeze. Don't just milk it. Almond milk it. Febreze. Hi. I use Febreze Fade to Five Plug. And I use this. Febreze has a microchip to control scent release, so it smells first day fresh for 50 days. 50 days? And this refill reminder light means I'll never miss a day of freshness. <laughs> Febreze Plug. Investment opportunities are everywhere you turn. But at T-Row Price, we're letting curiosity light the way. Asking smart questions about opportunities like advances in healthcare and how these innovations will create a healthier world tomorrow. Better questions, better outcomes. will celebrate St. Patrick's Day today, but its meaning resonates most among those who trace their roots to the Emerald Isle. Cara Knighton has sent us a postcard from Dublin. The ruins of Dunamay's Castle tower over County Leash in Ireland. While it's been centuries since anyone lived here, this American tour group has come to imagine what life might have been like when their ancestors called this land home. Does that change the experience for you at all? Yes, it, it actually does. To know that we've had relatives that probably rode horses out here. I mean, that's exciting. Jump those hedgerows. Maybe you lived in the castle. Who sure. knows? More than 30 million Americans claim Irish ancestry. Worldwide, more than 70 million people have Irish roots. And yet, the current population of Ireland is only around 5 million people. In the capital city of Dublin, the Epic Museum tells the story of Irish immigration. That's immigration with an E, the waves of citizens who moved abroad. Most other countries don't have museums dedicated to everyone who left that country. Is that more of the story of Ireland? In many ways, the history of Ireland is a history of emigration. Um, we were the only country in Europe to have more people at the start of the 19th century than at the end. Catherine Healy is a historian in residence at Epic. Exhibits at the museum highlight the achievements of those with Irish ancestry. Athletes and entertainers, inventors and authors. Everyone from Cedric Gibbons, designer of the Oscar statuette, to James Hoban, who designed the White House. A lot of people don't know is that that design is partly inspired by some of the Georgian architecture that he would have seen in Ireland. 23 occupants of the White House can claim Irish ancestry, from President James Buchanan to Joe Biden. If you can give the poor attempted Irish, Thomas Shaw Walia, I'm at home. John F. Kennedy was the country's first Irish Catholic president. This is not the land of my birth, but it's the land of, for which I hold the greatest affection. In 2011, President Obama traveled to the Irish village of Moneygall, where his great-great-great-grandfather lived before setting sail for America. And he left during the Great Hunger, as so many Irish did, to seek a new life in the new world. The peak of Irish immigration occurred during the famine of the mid-1800s. Over a 10-year period, the failure of the potato crop prompted an estimated quarter of the Irish population to set sail for America. It was a journey of desperation, people having no ability to have a livelihood in Ireland. While the museum tells that story, it also tells the story of cherished Irish cultural exports, from the Irish pub to Irish music. Have you done some research yourself? or have For an additional fee, it's possible to book a session with a professional genealogist at the affiliated Irish Family History Center. My great-grandparents came over from Ireland in the early 1900s. 
I worry a little bit that like my great 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 uncle was like the town streaker or something like that. No, 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 no,